The first plane designed to eliminate the sonic boom has just flown for the first time, but its first flight was anything but normal. When people saw the footage, many were stunned. In this video, we're going to tell you what makes this aircraft so special, how it differs from other supersonic projects, and why this first flight was so unexpected. The plane is called X-59, and it is owned by NASA. Its goal is clear, to test whether it is possible to fly faster than sound. Without generating that explosion, we hear from the ground, known as a sonic boom. This phenomenon has been a historical barrier for supersonic aviation. In fact, it's one of the reasons why the Concorde stopped flying over land. Every time a plane breaks the sound barrier, a shock wave forms that upon reaching the ground sounds like an explosion. That explosion, the sonic boom, is annoying. It can even shatter windows and cause citizen complaints. That's why civil supersonic aviation is banned over land in many countries. The X-59 seeks to change that. If it can fly without producing an audible boom, it could open the door to a new era of supersonic flights. Now also over land. The X-59 is not a commercial aircraft. It is not designed to carry passengers nor to generate profit. It is an experimental aircraft that seeks to solve an aerodynamic problem, to reduce the sonic boom to a soft thump, like closing a car door in the distance. This project is part of NASA's initiative called the Low Boom Flight Demonstration. To achieve this, the plane has been designed with a very unconventional shape. Its nose is long and narrow, the fuselage looks stretched, and the wings have a special geometry. But the most striking feature is this. The pilot cannot see forward. There is no front window. Instead, an external camera transmits the front view in real time to two screens inside the cockpit. This decision is not arbitrary. Eliminating the front glass allows for optimizing the nose design avoiding shapes that generate intense shock waves. In aircraft like the Concorde, this was solved with a drooping nose that lowered during takeoff and landing. In the X-59, however, they rely on digital technology to maintain a cleaner aerodynamic design. Besides the nose, the X-59 features canards, small front wings that help stabilize the aircraft. Its main wing has a noticeable swept shape designed to better control pressure waves. It also has an unusual tail configuration, with surfaces both above and below the fuselage. Its single engine is located on the upper rear part of the aircraft. This helps direct noise upward, away from the ground. Officially, the aircraft belongs to NASA. However, an interesting detail has been noticed. The fuselage bears a Skunk Works insignia, the famous advanced engineering department of Lockheed Martin. Skunk Works is known for developing some of the world's most secret and advanced planes, like the F-117, SR-71, and F-22. Although it has not been officially confirmed that Lockheed Martin is developing the aircraft, the presence of the logo suggests that they are involved in some capacity. This has led to speculation that the project could have applications beyond the civil sphere. Perhaps the X-59 is just a test platform for technologies that could later be used in supersonic military aircraft that fly undetected. For now, that is just a hypothesis. What is certain is that NASA is leading this project and flying it with its own pilots. Recently, the X-59 carried out its first test flight and it was nothing like what you would expect. In inaugural flights, planes usually take off gently, stay at low altitude, and return without complications. But the X-59 took off with such power and a steep angle that it looked like a fighter jet. The footage shows it quickly lifting off and gaining altitude with a very uncommon profile for a first flight.
The X-59's first flight has been partly documented by NASA itself, but also by external observers who managed to record it from outside the base. Thanks to this footage and public flight data, we know the takeoff was extremely vertical. The plane raised its nose quickly and climbed at a rate far above what is typical for initial test flights. Through platforms like flight radar, the aircraft's behavior could be analyzed in real time. Telemetry showed a climb rate of up to 7,000 feet per minute. To give you context, a commercial aircraft during takeoff usually climbs at about 2,000 to 3,000 feet per minute. This value is more than double and much closer to what a fighter jet would do. In a first flight, it's most common to carry out a conservative test. Take off, fly in a straight line, keep the landing gear down, and return quickly. But this was not the case. The X-59 performed an aggressive takeoff, gained altitude rapidly, and then headed toward another military facility. The plane took off from Palmdale Airport, California, a site that houses some of the top aerospace facilities in the United States. From there, it flew to Edwards Air Force Base, a historic site for experimental aviation development. Projects like the X-15, NASA's rocket plane that broke altitude and speed records, were tested at Edwards. Everything indicates that this flight wasn't just a technical test, it was also a transfer of the aircraft to the base where future supersonic tests will take place. This would explain the flight pattern. A rapid climb, straight segments, some test turns, and then landing at Edwards. Upon reaching the test zone, the plane performed several straight line paths with wide turns and speed changes. This is typical in test flights. Different flight configurations are evaluated to verify the aircraft's behavior at varying speeds, angles, and altitudes. During the flight, the average altitude was about 12,000 feet, relatively low for an aircraft that aims to fly at supersonic speeds in the future. During the flight, the X-59 was accompanied by another aircraft. This is completely normal in test flights. The chase plane allows for visual inspection to ensure everything is working, especially the landing gear and other critical maneuvers. It also serves as a communication backup or emergency support if needed. When reviewing the altitude and speed charts, we can see the aircraft maintained a relatively stable altitude profile, but with frequent speed variations. These changes were likely part of the engine and control performance testing they might also have been testing stability at different flight regimes. The environment where this project has developed is one of the most secretive in the world. At Palmdale Airport, from where the X-59 took off, there are facilities belonging to companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing. In fact, satellite images of the area show historic aircraft like the F-117 parked on the tarmac. There are also structures where engines with afterburners are tested. Everything indicates that the plane was assembled or prepared there. Although the X-59 is a civil and scientific project by NASA, its development and testing are taking place in highly military installations. And that has sparked speculation. Could this plane have a second life as a military platform? Is it simply a concept test? or also a base for future stealth and supersonic technologies. None of this is confirmed, but the indirect involvement of Skunk Works fuels suspicion. One of the most common questions is the relationship between this aircraft and the Boom supersonic project. The answer is clear. They have nothing to do with each other. Boom Supersonic is a private company that wants to build commercial supersonic jets but they are not working on reducing the sonic boom. Their strategy is to focus on oceanic routes where the noise doesn't affect anyone. Their goal is to sell planes to airlines and make a profit. The X-59 is not intended to be sold, nor to carry passengers. It only aims to prove a concept. 
that it is possible to fly at supersonic speeds without disturbing people on the ground. If the concept works, NASA could convince international regulators to change the rules. That would allow, in the future, companies like Boom or others to design supersonic planes. But now also over land. In the coming weeks and months, the X-59 will carry out more test flights. It has not yet flown at supersonic speed. First, they need to confirm that the plane behaves safely and stably in different scenarios. Then, they will attempt to break the sound barrier. And that's when we'll see if it can truly eliminate the boom. The X-59's flight is not only a technical milestone, it also represents a historic opportunity. If the project succeeds, it will forever change how we understand fast flight. It won't just be about going faster, but doing it without being heard. At Tech Curio, we'll continue covering every update on the X-59 project. If you're interested in the future of aviation, supersonic technology, and the real challenges behind these developments, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.